Hi everyone, welcome back to Mr. Mix Classroom. Today what I want to talk about is relevant to the FAA Part 107 exam and specifically what I want to go over is obstructions and how to read them, so like towers on the sectional charts, uh, distance, like how to, if they ask you a question about something being a certain number of statute miles away, how to figure that out where it's at, uh, and then airspace floors and ceilings. So everything I'm going over today has to do with sectional charts for the FAA Part 107 exam and specifically how to read some things on the sectional charts. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share my screen here. So let me share my screen. All right, great. So you should be able to see my screen now. And I'm over here on the uh, Norfolk Airport. So this is actually one I've seen on the test when I took the test. Um, and I'm just gonna move this over here. So it's out of my way, okay. All right, so I have the Norfolk Airport right here. And what I wanna specifically go over is how to read these, uh, these numbers so you can understand the airspace. So let's start with the center of the airport. So here's the Norfolk International Airport. And we know it's that airport because it says it right here, Norfolk International, and that's the city in Norfolk. Just as a side note, a lot of people ask me, what does all this yellow mean? That means urbanized area. There's a lot of population there. It's not to say no one lives over here. People do live here, but this is more of the city. So these are more of the city limits. Um, anyway, so here's the Norfolk Airport and you see this solid magenta line, as we've talked about in the past, that means it's a Clash Charlie airspace. Then you see this 40 over SFC. That's telling us the distance of the airspace. What's the floor of the airspace and what's the ceiling of the airspace? So the floor for right by the airport is, um, is surface. So that means the airspace starts right at the surface. So where the airport's at and it goes up to 40, or sorry, 4,000 feet. Because what you do here is you add two zeros. They drop off two zeros. So you're gonna add two zeros uh, to, um, to these here. To any of these, that's what you do. You're adding two zeros to them. So in this case, this is 4,000 feet is gonna be the ceiling. So it's Clash Charlie airspace all the way up into 4,000 feet, and that's 4,000 feet MSL, mean sea level. Um, and all the airspaces, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, all of them are gonna be MSL except for Echo. Echo will be AGL, so when you see that shaded magenta, um, like down here, that's gonna be above ground level. So this starts at 700 feet AGL, but we got into that last video, I won't get into that now. I wanna more get into how to read these numbers. So then you see the outer shelves. Norfolk's kind of unique because it has multiple outer shelves. And most Charlies usually just have one, it's like a circle. And it's like an inner circle and then an outer circle, but they can all look different. The Asheville Airport also looks different. So over here, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. Over here uh, on this outer shelf, we also see that uh, this one is 20, 40 over 20. So that means the floor on this airspace starts at 2,000 feet. So again, you add two zeros and it goes up to 4,000 feet. So meaning if you're sitting over here, um, you're not, if you're under 2,000 feet, you're not in class Charlie airspace. Now here's the thing. We'll see this other airport. So this, this airport right here, the Norfolk INS uh, NGU airport, um, that is a separate airport. So here's the Norfolk International Airport, and this one's a separate airport. That's why it has that weird airspace. So anything over 2,000 feet is the Charlie airspace part of the Norfolk International Airport. Um, but then anything under 2,000 feet is gonna be class delta. This one's really confusing and that's why I wanted to point this one out. So if you can see it and you really gotta look here, there's this dashed blue line. That is indicating a class delta airspace, but it's just right here. Here's the class delta. And this little box here with the minus 20 is telling us it's class delta under 2,000 feet. Whereas this, once you cross over this line, if you're over here, you're in class Charlie at the ground. If you're over here, you're in class Delta on the ground. It's still controlled airspace. You still cannot fly your drone there if you're on the ground. If you're on the ground, like say right here, you cannot fly your drone without ATC, air traffic control permission, right? Let's go to this outer shelf over here. Um, and if that's confusing to you, leave some comments, ask some questions. Uh, 
but essentially we got two different airspaces overlapping each other. The important thing, I wanna backtrack a little bit, the important thing to know here is it's only delta up until 20,000 feet. That's the minus 20 means under 20,000 feet, it's delta over 20,000 feet, it's Charlie. It's not both Charlie and delta at the same time. Okay, so back over here, we're back in our Charlie airspace uh, for the Norfolk International Airport. And both on this side, as well as this side over here, it's the same airspace. So this is all over water, so I'm, I'm gonna use this as an example. All right, so this says 40 over 12. Again, we add two zeros, so that means it's gonna start at 1,200 feet MSL and go up to 4,000 feet MSL. So this is Norfolk, so like MSL is almost the same as AGL over here. And you can actually see, um, it will give you what the, uh, the sea level is of that, um, airport right here, so 27 feet above sea level. You can also see it in the obstructions, which we'll get to later, but this is obviously a coastal area, so it's not very high. Anyway, as long as you're under 1,200 feet MSL, that means in this area, in these surrounding areas, you could fly your drone without ATC permission. So if you're under 1,200 feet, you're under the floor of this airspace, you're not in class Charlie airspace. You're in class Gulf airspace, and remember, G good Gulf airspace. So that's where you can fly your drone without ATC permission. So if you're under 1200 feet MSL here, you're free to fly your drone without ATC permission. All right. Um, okay, cool. That's what I wanted to say about this airspace. I hope that helps you with reading these numbers here. All you have to do is just add two zeros. That's what they do to these days. They just take off two zeros. If it's in a box, it is the same thing. You add two zeros but it's only giving you where the ceiling is and then everything under, then it goes all the way to the floor. Well, let me show you another example of a D over here. Now I'm on this uh, VFR maps site. This is really good if you're like, just wanting to learn the sectional charts, go to this free site, vfrmap.com and you can get the sectional charts for the whole country. Let me zoom in a bit. Um, this is the Garden City Airport. Uh, and I just picked a random Delta. Here's another example of where it's not so confusing. So you don't, you don't, we don't have so much around. We're in the Midwest over here. We're in Kansas and um, not as much around, but it still does that same thing. So we got this class Delta airspace and it gives us this box with the 54 in it. This is telling us this is the ceiling of the airspace. So the Delta airspace goes from the ground level all the way up to 5,400 feet. We still add two zeros just like we did with the Charlie. The difference here is, is we don't have that negative sign beforehand. So that means 5,400 feet is still class Delta airspace, whereas in the Norfolk example over here, this 2,000 feet is part of Charlie. It's not part of Delta. And they will ask these questions on, uh, they're gonna ask this on the part 107 exam. They'll give you maybe an example like this, at exactly 2,000 feet, are you in Charlie or Delta? Something that won't be exactly like that. It'll give you three options, but it's gonna try to mess you up. Like if you're at 2,000 feet, what airspace are you in? And the answer would be Charlie here because it's minus 2,000. So anything under 2,000 is Delta. Whereas here, there's no minus sign. So at 5,400 feet, you would be in, um, you would be in Delta airspace still. Over 5,400 feet, now you're in, you're in Echo, you're not in Gulf, you're just not in the, the Delta airspace. The point is they might ask you a question like, at 5,400 feet, what airspace would you be in? And the answer here would be you'd be in Delta. Anything under 5,400 in this circle, you're in Delta. If you're in this outer area, then this is that shaded magenta. So this over here is echo, but it starts at 700 feet AGL, not MSL, where this is 5,400 feet MSL. This would be 700 feet AGL, and it's 700 feet all the way up to 1800 or 18,000 feet uh, MSL, which is where class alpha airspace starts. So this would be 700 feet up is uh, your echo airspace. But if you're below 700 feet and you're sitting out here in this outer area, then you're fine, you're in, you're in Gulf. Now keep in mind these things right here, these dashed magenta lines are an extension of echo. So at ground level, if you see a dashed magenta, you're echo ground level. Um, as a little side note, people ask like, well, wait a second, I can't go up the 5,400 feet, so why do I need to know this? Why should I even care? Because they're going to test you on it. That's all I got to say about that. All right, next thing I want to go over is distance. Let me go up here to the top, and right up here we see a scale. 
So this will help us with our distance. And you see nautical miles, statute miles, kilometers. They could ask you any of the three. A lot of the times they ask the question in statute miles. So they might say something like, um, you know, let's use this example. I've seen actually the Elizabeth City Airport, which is right here on the test. And they might say something like, uh, five statute miles southeast of the Elizabeth City Airport is an obstruction. You have been hired by a company to inspect the tower. You wanna to be able to fly to the highest possible altitude above the tower, what airspace would you be in? Sorry for the long thing there, but that's literally how the questions are. Anyway, so we'll go up here and we'll just use our finger or something and say, okay, statute miles. So that, that'd be about like half. You could use a ruler or like, well, or like a piece of paper if it helps. Let's say that's like about half, so that's five. You know, so five statue miles would bring us maybe about here. Uh, whoops, sorry, you're not looking at my fingers. Uh, I was pointing with my fingers. Oh, so five statue miles would be, right, be about here. Let's say, let's just use this one as the example. So let's say that's about 10 statue miles. So say they say in the question about 10 statue miles southeast of the Elizabeth City Airport, there's an obstruction that you need to inspect. So let's say it's this one. You just use that scale to kind of measure it. You don't have to be perfect. Um, you just got to get close enough. The big thing is really just knowing your directions, right? Obviously, this is north, east, south, west. Um, I'll get back to the compass in a second. Uh, this is, this blue solid ring here is not airspace, by the way. It's a compass, but I'll talk about that momentarily. Um, all right, so we have our obstruction here. So this could be a tower. This could be... Um, a building, this could be a mountain, this could be a lot of different things. In this case, we're near the coast again, so it's, it's not a mountain. Uh, it's probably some sort of tower. It could be a radio tower, it could be whatever. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. So I'm talking about this tower, and you see two numbers underneath this tower here, or I'm gonna call it a tower, this obstruction. So it's this little TP, or like, looking symbol, and then underneath it, you see 271 and 262. Here's the difference. The 271, the number on top in bold, is MSL. It's the top of this tower in mean sea level. The bottom number in parentheses is the top of this tower in AGL. So it's the bottom number in parentheses right there, that 262, is the actual height of this tower. And that's kind of the more important part. Uh, because if you're asked a question of like uh, how high you, you want to you want to fly above this tower, what's the max, or how high would you be? Or, sorry, let me restate that. Uh, maybe you're asked something like, you want to fly to the maximum loud altitude above this tower, how high would you fly your drone? Well, remember, we can fly our drone 400 feet up, or uh, 120 meters, but they usually go by feet um, in the test. So 400 feet, you can fly your drone. However, if you're above a tower, you can fly an additional 400 feet over that tower, or over that obstruction. So in this case, you could fly to 662 feet high in altitude um, because you're flying over this tower. As long as you're you know, uh, within 400 feet of the tower, you can fly 400 feet above it. So we, uh, in, in this case, we'd be at 662 feet. That's what you wanna know. And they give you an option an, a wrong answer option of 671 feet. That would be wrong. You're not 671 feet above the ground. You're 662 feet above the ground. You'd, this is, remember, that top number is the MSL. The other thing they'll ask you, and what more likely will be asked on the test, is, okay, you've been hired to inspect this tower. Uh, you want to fly to the highest maximum altitude above the tower. What airspace will you be in while inspecting the tower? Well, in this case, again, we're going to be 662 feet high because we're going to be 400 feet over the tower because we want to fly to our maximum altitude. Um, this shaded magenta over here is class echo airspace and it starts at 700 feet. So if we're at 662 feet, we're still in class golf airspace. So they might ask you a question like, do you need ATC permission to do this operation? The answer would be no because we're below that 700 feet of this shaded magenta. Um, if the tower were a little bit taller, if it, you know, and it put us over 700 feet, then yes, we would need to get, um, we'd need to get permission from the ATC. So those are things you want to look out for. Uh, and if you have any questions about that, just ask me, uh, leave comments in the comments section, and I'll clear those up for you. 
Next thing I want to go over, last thing I want to go over today is just this little compass here. I think this confuses people sometimes. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. So, well, these maps are, okay, there we go. Uh, that zoomed out too much. Let me zoom back in here. Okay, these maps can be, um, can be tough to work with. That's why I actually like these uh, VFR maps. But anyway, so what happens sometimes to my students is they see this blue solid circle, right? We see this blue solid circle over our Norfolk International Airport. And, and we know that a blue, blue solid circle represents class Bravo airspace. This is not class Bravo airspace. This is class Delta because it has a dash blue line. If you see that dash blue line in the center there, then that's telling you this is a Delta airspace. So what's this blue circle around it? This has nothing to do with the airspace. That's what this is. This is not an indication in airspace. And they do overlay these kind of perfectly over the airport. So it looks like it's maybe part of it, but it's not. This is a compass. That's what this blue circle is. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with the airspace of the Elizabeth City Airport. It's just a compass. That's it. So, and we know this because right here we see this zero, uh, or actually that zero is for something else. This, that zero, zero seven is not part of the compass, by the way. That's, uh, it, it goes along with this one, two. Um, it's actually how high you need to fly in order to be above obstructions. It's actually for, more for manned aircraft. But, um, Right here, this zero here is more part of the compass, right? You see that little zero, not this one, but that zero um, over there, that's, kind of, that's part of the compass. So that's north, and we know it because there's that line and it's pointing to that zero. So that zero there is north. And then over here, we'll see other numbers. East should be nine. I don't see a nine in here. I do see a 12, and I do see an 18, an 18 south. And then 27 would be west. And again, they can only put things in here that are going to fit. So what they do here is they're using a, a circular compass, right? That's really what they are, all are. And they're, a circle is 360 degrees. So zero is north, 90 degrees is east, 180 degrees is south, and 270 degrees is west. What they do to save space is they drop a zero. So instead of writing 90 on the compass, they write 9. Instead of writing 180 on the compass, they write 18. Instead of writing 270 on the compass, they write 27, so on and so forth, right? So that's all that blue circle is. It's a compass. It's not part of the airspace. Um, I hope those things help. I think I made this video a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I'll do some more videos on some other topics. Please ask questions. Throw them in the comment sections. If there are certain things that are confusing you or you need help with um, that you want to go over, um, let me go ahead and stop that share. If there's certain things that you need some help with or you want to go over, please put them in the comments section below and I'll make sure to go over those topics. I do plan on uh, releasing a few more videos soon on some other topics. Uh, thanks for watching. Please uh, click the like button. It does help with my algorithm um, and subscribe to the videos. Thanks for watching Mr. Mix Classroom and I'll see you next time.